This year, Romania is celebrating its centenary. This is our last day here, and I will introduce to you a few Bucharest oddities today. One of these is what used to be a Bucharest Bohemian hotspot on top of the huge building of the National Theatre. We used to have La Motoare there to just hang out and sip beer and watch movies, free movies on a big screen, independent director movies and all that kind of European cinematography. But I found out that the place shot about four or five years ago when they renovated the building, which is such a shame. Just for a first humorous oddity, what are the chances that after four or five years you return to the city and you look for this bohemian hotspot, but you run into your ex who's always skinned and owes you money and he's sitting at this exclusive bar sipping beer. An important to know Bucharest oddity is the lack of public toilets. There's very few around, like the one placed in the University Metro Passage. I tried to use that one, but they had no toilet paper and it was quite dirty. So I ended up in Intercontinental Hotel in the lobby where we just went in and asked for the toilet. If you try to go to other institutions or places, sometimes staff members do not speak English and they will not understand what you actually need. So keep that in mind. For instance, this is a beautiful building, a really nice museum, but staff here don't speak English and they wouldn't let me use their toilet at all. You come across a lot of strange architectural juxtapositions. An architectural gem of Bucharest, this bank building, the cross, a nagri, block of flats and the church. The church itself, it's a historical monument. The smell of incense and of burnt candles just fills your nostrils as you enter. The Maca Villa Cross Passage, built as an oddity of architectural ambition, now functions as the hookah hotspot of Bucharest. In the evening, all of these seats are filled with people just um, smoking their hookah and sipping on their Turkish tea or coffee. On every corner you come across churches. And plenty of massage parlors. Or even better, a pharmacy next to a massage parlor. It might be a good idea to have both God and a good chemist around with so many temptations nearby. And even more massage parlors just down the street. But don't forget the city center is also crammed with theaters. Beautiful bookstores. My partner stopped drawn to these books all in English. So if you want to buy some books for your holiday, 
you might find some here from Lolita to Philip K. Dick and Arthur C. Clarke. An American tourist arrives in Bucharest at Otopeni Airport. He gets an Uber and he heads for the city. And first he sees the Arch of Triumph. He asks the Uber driver, what is this? The driver says, well, this is the Arch of Triumph. Oh, how long did it take to build this? It took about, let's say, two years. Oh, this in two years? In America, we would have done it in six months. Then they come across uh, the government building. And again, the American tourist asks the Uber driver, but what is this? Oh, this is the government building. And how long did it take to build this then? About five years. Oh, this in five years? We would have built this in two years. The Uber driver is getting a little bit, you know, angry, pissed off now. And then they get to the people's house built by Ceausescu. And again, the American tourist says, oh, oh, wh wh what is this one? And the Uber driver goes, what, this? I've got no clue, it wasn't here this morning. So this is a sample of Romanian humor with a quite well-known joke. But actually, we are in front of Ceausescu's people's house, his architectural project to show off his dictatorship. The people's house is the second largest building in the world after the Pentagon building, but actually it weighs the heaviest in the whole world. The heaviest building, it has six stories down under the ground. I have to confess, I have only once visited the People's House for a modern art exhibition, but otherwise, as a Romanian, I wasn't much interested. A lot of people in Bucharest would rather go to other places than this massive building which stood for Ceausescu's ambitions. In order to build these blocks of flats, massive as well, and his own palace, the people's house, Ceausescu demolished a whole neighborhood of the old historical Bucharest. Ceausescu's massive blocks of flats lead through the main boulevard over to Piazza Uniri. Also, everywhere you turn around in the city center, you can find some graffiti scribbled, some better than others. Everybody feeds the pigeons in Bucharest, so they are quite spoiled. I promised I'll bring you back to this place, Stavropolios Monastery, a historical monument two steps away from Karol Kubere. So before we leave Bucharest, we came back to this place. It's beautiful, an oasis of tranquility in the hustle and bustle of the historical center with all its restaurants, fun places and even massage parlors. But be aware, it's a beautiful setting for photography. You might be lucky so you can take images, but you might be unlucky so that a elderly woman chases you away saying that Photography is not allowed, although no signs are displayed around. We couldn't leave Bucharest without a stop at my favorite cake shop, Agapitos. We still found it here on one of the back streets from the National Theatre. We bought two pieces of cake, we're going to munch these. We will conclude our exploration of Bu Bucharest with some sweet treats. That's it, more on our next trip to Bucharest. Just walking around to find an ATM, we came across this graffiti on the side of a stadium. It says 1918, because this year Romania is celebrating its centenary. As a country in its form today, we have only existed for nearly a hundred years. <laughs> 